Dante is an extremely tanky, high damage dealing supportive nuking frame and in today's video we're going to be covering 4 different builds for Dante that will make his exalted book ability Noctua extremely strong, allow him to kill every enemy in a room at the press of a button and increase the damage of his weapons and abilities even further. Hey guys what's up Zyphlin here and I've been playing Warframe for 10 years welcome to my ultimate Dante build guide. Dante is one of those frames that is good the moment that you claim him from your foundry. His first ability is his exalted book called Noctua. Noctua is classified as a secondary weapon so that means you can apply secondary weapon mods to it but you can't equip secondary weapon arcanes to it. Noctua has got two firing modes, the single shot firing mode which deals only slash damage and an alt fire wave shot which deals radiation and impact damage. The slash damage firing mode deals 250 slash damage unmodded per Per shot where the radiation and impact wave alt fire deals 1650 radiation damage and 1100 impact damage for a combined total of 2750 damage when unmodded. You charge the alt fire for Noctua by shooting normally with the single shot slash firing mode. As you land hits with the single shot firing mode, a bar beneath your crosshair will fill up. Once filled, you press middle mouse button, then Noctua is going to shoot the radiation and impact wave. This bar also fills a tiny bit passively as well. Dante's second ability is called Lightverse. This ability on cast will regen a percentage of lost health and grant Overguard to Dante himself and nearby allies. Overguard is like a shield over the top of your original shield and health bar. When you have Overguard, you can't be knocked over and you won't be affected by any status effects, for example, bleed procs or toxin procs. The amount of health and Overguard granted is increased with power strength mods such as Intensify, these mods go onto your Warframe, and the radius that the ability covers, aka how close your teammate needs to be to you to receive the benefits, is increased by power range mods such as Stretch, this is also equipped to your frame. Dante's third ability, Dark Verse, is a damage dealing ability that deals two instances of 1200 150 slash damage with guaranteed slash procs to enemies in front of him up to 20 meters in a 50 degree cone line of sight. The amount of damage the Dark Burst deals can be increased with power strength mods and the range the Dark Burst damages enemies is affected by power range mods. The line of sight angle cannot be increased nor decreased by mods. Dante's fourth ability, Final Verse, is actually four different abilities in one. Which ability you cast when you press 4 is determined by the order that you last press Dante's second and third ability. If you cast the second ability Light Verse two times in a row and then press 4, Dante will cast Triumph. Triumph gives you an even bigger amount of overguard, 3000 overguard when unmodded, and while Dante is max rank, if that wasn't enough overguard, you can recast the ability until you reach up to 15,000 overguard. Triumph also grants overguard regeneration on kill and assist, which allows you to refresh the 500 millisecond overguard gate permanently, similar to shield gating, so you can basically never die. The amount of overguard gained and the maximum amount of overguard that you can have on your frame from Dante's abilities is affected by power strength mods. If you cast the third ability, Dark Burst, two times in a row and then cast this four, you're going to cast Tragedy. Tragedy will deal additional slash damage to those caught in the radius of the ability and it will also detonate damage over time status effects such as slash heat and toxin in a damage burst which will multiply the damage that the status effects were meant to do. The amount of damage the tragedy deals and the status effects damage multiplier is increased by power strength mods. You also need to equip power range mods to increase the range of this ability. If you first cast light first, the second ability, followed by dark first, the third ability, your fourth ability will cast word warden which will give you the Noctua book as a companion. Noctua will shoot at the same time you fire your gun and will deal 50% of the damage that you dealing. If an ally is close enough to you when Word Warden is cast, they will also receive a copy of Noctua following them around. You can increase the damage that Word Warden deals via mod in your Noctua book and increasing power strength on Dante. You can also increase the duration of Word Warden, so that's how long he follows you around for by using ability duration mods such as continuity, and you can increase how far a Word Warden cast reaches by throwing on power range mods on your frame. If you first cast Dark First, the third ability, followed by Light First, the second ability, your fourth cast will cast Page Flight. Page Flight will spawn in free birds that will seek out and attack enemies dealing slash damage while also making the enemies more vulnerable to status effects and increasing the amount of damage dealt by them. The slash damage, the status vulnerability and the status effect damage increase from this ability are all affected by power strength mods. How long this ability lasts for is also increased by power duration mods. Dante's passive ability is somewhat inconsistent to take advantage of as it requires you to fully scan the enemies that you're 
you're facing into your codex. Once an enemy is fully scanned, they'll become debuffed by a debuff called Chronicler's Mark, which grants Dante's weapons, including the ability Noctua and Warb Warden, 50% extra status chance. As you get kills with Noctua, Dante's first ability, you'll get one codex scan for the slain enemy per kill, so you can complete some of the scans just by killing enemies with Noctua. Now that we understand all of Dante's abilities and how they work, we're going to talk about how to mod them and make powerful builds for different playstyles that Dante's abilities enable. The first of which is a build that makes use of all of his base abilities, but is centered around getting as much damage out of his first ability in Noctua as possible. This is Dante's book DPS build. On this build, we run very high strength and high duration. We totally neglect ability efficiency as we have other ways of sustaining energy that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Our ability range stat is on the lower end, but even so, the abilities that require range still have around a 15 to 23 meter radius, which is a large enough area for what we need them to do. We mainly focus on increasing our ability strength as higher ability strength values means more damage and effectiveness across all of our abilities. Ability duration comes in second in priority as it increases how long War Warden and Page Flight lasts, these two abilities when cast will increase our damage in their own unique ways. To increase our ability strength, we're using the mods Transient Fortitude, Blame Rage, Umbral Intensify, Pyre Drift, Growing Pyre in the Aura, and the Arcane known as Molt Augmented, which you can pick up from Cavaliero in the Zaraman, or as a random drop from killing Frax enemies in Zaraman missions. To increase our ability duration, we're running Narrow Minded and Prime Continuity. For energy sustain, we're going to be running Prime Flow to increase our max energy, and Equilibrium, so health orbs also work as energy orbs. Then finally, we have Archon Stretch On, which is going to get us a little bit of range for our abilities, counteracting the negative effect to range that Narrow Minded has. Our Archon Stretch also has the added benefit of restoring our energy at a rate of 2 energy per second if one of our abilities deals electric damage. This isn't what I'm going to be using on this build to sustain my energy, but I've thrown it on so you guys have the option of running it in case you want to use electric damage on your Noctua. Speaking of Noctua, he counts as a secondary weapon and we have three builds that I recommend running depending on the content that you're doing. First up, we have a Viral Slash build where we're running Hornet Strike for damage, Anemic Agility and Lethal Torrent for fire rate and multi shot. Galvanized Diffusion for even more multi-shot, Prime Pistol Gambit and Prime Target Cracker for critical chance and critical damage. Then finally we have Frostbite for cold and Pistol Pestilence for toxin to give us viral damage. As Noctua's single shot firing mode is mainly slash damage, using viral damage as an elemental damage type is great, as the status effect from viral will increase the amount of damage that our slash procs, aka the bleeding effect, will deal to enemies. Remember that slash procs deal damage to enemies' health directly through their armor or shields, which makes the build great in higher level content where the enemies have higher armor values and become more tanky. Second, we have a build for the Murmur faction, as these enemies are quite tanky and have a lot of different armor, we run Corrosive and Radiation as our elements to deal the highest number of damage possible directly to the enemies. In this build, we have Hornet Strike for damage, Galvanized Diffusion and Lethal Torrent for multi-shot, Prime Pistol Gambit and Prime Target Cracker for critical chance and critical damage, Prime Convulsion for Electric and Path Gym Rounds for Toxin to make Corrosive, then finally Accelerated Isotope for Radiation Damage and additional Fire Rate paired with the Fire Rate buff from Lethal Torrent as well. Our third build isn't the highest damage dealing build for Noctua, it's more of a supportive utility build that will increase our duration, efficiency, strength, and give us energy regen by using the Riss, Netra, Boom, and Zada Invocation mods when we use Noctua's alt fire and hit multiple enemies. This can be a fun build if you want to use the book and make the rest of Dante's kit really strong. To increase the amount of damage that Noctua deals even further, we are making use of a secondary weapon arcane known as Secondary Outburst which will consume all of our melee combo count to increase our secondary weapon's critical chance and critical damage by 20% per combo consumed for 30 seconds. So for this Dante build, we are using the Venka Prime as its unique trait lets the maximum combo counter scale up to 13 times instead of the usual 12 times on most melee weapons. This build that I have on the Venka Prime is only for building combo count and not for dealing damage at all. If you have it, you can run melee crescendo as your melee arcane, then pair that with void snare in the Vazor and focus skill tree so you can knock over and grip enemies with your operator or drifter second ability to allow you to do ground finishers with your venka prime to have more initial combo for the rest of the mission this means that you have to spend less time in melee to get your crit chance and crit damage buff for your secondary weapon and noctua with the venka prime and secondary outburst arcane equipped we gain an additional 260 percent extra
extra critical chance and critical damage at 13 times combo, which takes our primary fire on Noctua into orange crit territory. That's a crit chance value over 100%, so that's a big critical hit. And the alt fire into red crit territory, which is a crit chance value at or over 200%, known as a super critical hit. For my companion, I'm running Worm Prime with a build that looks like this. The star of the show is the reinforced bomb mod that will increase our fire rate by 60% when Worm's shields go over 1200. This is easy to achieve simply by throwing on a maxed out calculated redirection as our final shield value on Worm Prime after this mod is considered is 2100. So you have a permanent 60% fire rate buff which is really important as Noctua really needs to fire it. Another thing you can do with your Sentinel is run the Volklock or Volklax. These are only chosen as they can get 50% plus critical chance which is a prerequisite for Tenacious Bond's 1.2 times final crit damage multiplier which is also a mod that we've got equipped on Worm for better crits. The last thing that we need to talk about whenever it comes to Dante's DPS big build is how we plan to sustain our energy. To stay on theme I recommend using the Grim War secondary which is another book just as an actual secondary weapon. Here you're going to run the secondary outburst arcane and the Zada's invocation tome mod so if you need energy all you have to do is whip out the Grim War, hold left click for a little bit to build up the charge for the alt fire then send your alt fire towards a group of enemies to proc the energy regen. This Grim War build is not meant to be a primary source of damage we run hornet strike galvanized diffusion and lethal torrent to increase our multi-shot and damage lethal torrent also provides a fire rate buff pair this with the fire rate buff from gunslinger and the build up for the alt fire becomes extremely quick for elements i'm running corrosive and radiation but you can run viral and radiation if you like as well the final thing to mention is our additional arcane slot on our frame if you want to get as much damage out of Noctua as possible, I recommend running Archean Precision, which will give you a bonus 300% damage when you land a headshot with Noctua. To play this build, when you get into a mission, give yourself some Overguard by casting Light Burst twice, then cast Triumph. Go into your Operator with Vazarin equipped and use your 2 to group enemies by aiming at the ground and casting. Melee them to build combo. If you've got enough energy, cast Noctua, then start shooting and killing. If not, fire an alt fire shot from Grimoire at a group of enemies for energy regen. Now cast Light Burst, then Dark Burst for Ward Warden, then Dark Burst, then Light Burst for Page Flight. Once these abilities are up, just shoot while spamming Dark Burst and Tragedy to kill all the enemies around. Remember to melee every 30 seconds to build combo so you keep those crit buffs for your Noctua. That's all for the book DPS build for Dante. Now we're moving on to the ability DPS build. This build replaces Noctua the first ability for Rhino's Roar ability via Helminth. Because of this we want to run a primer build on our Noctua so when we spawn in Warp Warden, Noctua is going to spread elements of our choosing to enemies hit. This enables us to run electro damage on our War Warden so we can take advantage of the energy regen effect from Archon Stretch. This build compared to the book DPS build sacrifices a bit of strength and duration for more efficiency and range. Efficiency is important as we want to spam our abilities as often as we can so we throw on Streamline instead of Narrow Minded. Most of our damage is going to be coming from Tragedy, so instead of running Umbral Intensify to increase the power strength of all of our abilities, we're instead running Precision Intensify to increase the amount of damage that Tragedy deals alone. We also swap by Arcane Precision for Arcane Energize to help with energy sustain. As this build doesn't make use of Noctua in their Exalted form, we don't have to run Secondary Outburst on our Secondary Weapon if we don't want to, nor would we have to run the Venka Prime to build combo. You can use whatever Primary, Secondary and Melee Weapon that you want. Roar is one of the best damage buffing abilities in the game. It makes it so you don't have to run a faction mod on your weapons and instead can focus on running more critical damage or critical chance in the faction mod's place. This is because Roar and faction mods offer the same kind of damage multiplier. Roar increases the damage once on the initial hit of damage then increases the damage further again a second time when a damage over time effect deals damage. This is known as double dipping in the context of Warframe and is relevant to talk about on this build as it's going to greatly improve the amount of damage that we're dealing with Dante's third and fourth abilities. All you have to do to play this build when you load into a mission is cast your light burst and triumph for your overguard, cast your roar, cast a war warden and page play after a few casts of light and dark burst, then float around spamming dark burst and tragedy so everything falls. Next up we have a weapon platform build for Dante which uses the exact same mods as the book DPS build. The only difference is we don't have to use arcane precision and we can run either roar or nourish over his one. As mentioned before roar is one of the best damage buffing abilities in the game as it enables you to replace the faction mods on your weapons for a crit chance or critical damage mod 
and double dips the damage on your damage over time effects. This is great if you often run viral hunt munition weapon builds. But if you're someone that just likes to run corrosive and not swap your weapon mods and loadouts too much, you might want to consider throwing Nourish onto this build for a lazier style of play. Nourish will directly add viral damage to your weapon, increasing the amount of damage that you deal across the board because of the viral damage and the added viral status effects. It'll also multiply the amount of energy that you get from all sources, turning the game on relaxed easy mode. This build plays the exact same as the ability spam DPS build, just with more focus on power strength and duration for a stronger nourish or roar buff and more uptime. Just remember to still run the primer build that we showed up on Noctua to help sustain your energy because of the bonus effect from Archon Stretch and electric damage equipped to Noctua that War Warden is going to use. The final build is a casual build for Dante that you'll be able to use in the likes of Fisher Exterminate missions to get them done quickly. This is basically a different kind of ability spam DPS build that just deals enough damage to deal with lower level enemies. On this build, we run more ability range via Archon Stretch and Overextended, so Dark Burst and Tragedy hit more enemies with a single cast. We also run Fleet and Expertise, Preparation and Prime Flow, so we can spam these abilities more often and from the very start of the mission. We have an ample amount of duration on this build via Nara Minded, Prime Continuity and the Multi Efficiency Arcane from the Zaraman, so our buffs such as Word Warden and Page Flight only really need to be casted once at the start of the mission. Transient Fortitude and Growing Power are the only mods that will increase our strength of all of our abilities, but that's okay because the real focus is on Tragedy and for that we are running Precision Intensify to boost up the strength for that ability alone by 90%. If you really wanted to, you could run Nourish or Roar over Noctua in this build as well. I personally would lean more towards Nourish just so I can be ultra lazy with my weapon build so I can just run my Corrosive builds and I never have to worry about energy sustain as Nourish is just going to make everything give me double the amount of energy anyway. You might have noticed with this build and maybe a few of my other builds for Dante that the math for the Power Strength mod and my final strength value doesn't quite add up and this is because I'm running four Talforge Crimson Archon Shards giving me 15% power strength each for a total of 60% additional power strength across all of my Dante builds. I'm running a single Talforge Amber Archon Shard for faster cast speed. If you want it, you could run two Talforge or two Normal for extra cast speed. It's entirely down to you. Additionally, you could consider running two Normal Emerald Shards if you often run Crucive damage on your weapons as this is going to enable you to apply more Crucive prog to enemies to full strip their armor so you can deal more damage. The bare minimum that I recommend running is either two normal amber shards or one tau forge amber shard for casting speed and depending on how many amber shards you throw on that's going to determine how many crimson shards you throw on for additional power strength. I recommend at the very least one then the final archon shard slots that you've got you can throw anything on that you want. I recommend either more crimson shards or two emerald shards. And that is all for my ultimate Dante build guide. If you liked the video, go ahead, leave a like. Let me know if you use the build down in the comment section below and what you think of it. And make sure to subscribe as I'm going to be updating all of my Warframe builds over the course of 2024. So go ahead, hit sub and stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.